All right, so today I am joined by Dr. Sarah Main, who has uh, been practicing in the Foothills area for over 15 years, and she is our uh, highly referred um, traditional Chinese medicine doctor and acupuncture and everything else. So Sarah, I'm going to let you take the lead and um, tell us all about yourself. All right, thanks, Lisa. Uh, as Lisa just said, I'm Dr. Sarah Main. I'm a DTCM RAC and uh, now retiring out of massage therapy. I'm also an aromatherapist. Uh, I also uh, deal with Bach flower essences. And I also do guided meditations. I've also done my yoga teacher training. I'm also uh, a Qigong instructor. So uh, you can see, uh, I kind of like to dabble in a lot of areas. Uh, I have a very holistic pro uh, practice, and I really uh, enjoy working with people with all of the tools in my toolbox. So when people say, oh, you're the acupuncturist, I say yes, and more, because uh, I like an integrative practice. And I think people get better results when you're willing to uh, explore and experience what works best for them. So uh, I work with all ages and all demographics uh, from uh, babies or even uh, ladies who are pregnant, so people mm -hmm. who aren't even born, uh, right up to uh, seniors and people in, in the end stages of life. So I've, I've definitely uh, worked with a myriad of concerns, um, everything from uh, seasonal allergies to hot flashes to pain, um, and I just enjoy all of it because each uh, different condition gives me a new opportunity to learn and to engage with my patients. So, um, and I've been a community member uh, for about 15 years, uh, living and working in the Foothills area. I'm really passionate about serving my community and uh, not only my patients, but seeing how we can benefit uh, the health of High River as a whole. So that's a little bit about myself. Uh, thanks for asking. <laughs> for I love sharing. I would talk forever if you let me. That's okay. Well, I'm going to use my personal experience. So I, um, I've known Sarah for a long time, but I reached out to you about what two years ago, I think, around there. Um, I chose to go off birth control pills, and I knew that it would have been probably over 20 years of me being on the pill, and um, short of my pregnancy, and um, I knew that there was a lot of like misalignment that was starting to happen. I was incredibly stressed out. There's a lot of things that just weren't feeling right. So I approached you for help. <laughs> I didn't know what I was looking for, but I knew I needed some sort of help. And I knew that in the past I'd had some benefit from very like limited access, but some access to acupuncture treatments. And so that's where we started. Um, but you also approached it a little bit differently. So can you kind of walk through, if you remember, can you walk through that, uh, that experience? Um, well, certainly I, I treat a number of women's concerns, um, and a lot of them, um, uh, Western medicine um, has their own way of doing things, but uh, Eastern medicine, we're a whole mo uh, more holistic practice, and we approach each individual not just with the single symptom that is their main concern, but um, what their whole constitution, uh, body, mind, and spirit look like. So whenever um, a patient comes in with a specific concern, and um, you know, like yours, you did have a goal in mind, um, but we also do an initial intake and discuss all matters of your health so that we can look at the big picture and see where this um, uh, branch, as it will, um, where the root cause of this branch is in, in the tree of your health. So that's kind of how any patient experience uh, would look like. Yeah. So what kind of questions do you go through when you go through that intake interview, be it uh, in person or now online through your Google Forms? Um, absolutely. So uh, the in-person and online experience uh, are similar. I ask everyone the same things. Uh, in person, we actually do a face-to-face -face question um, questionnaire together, and I can observe you uh, while you're discussing those things with me. But to save time for online interviews, uh, I send a Google document first. The kind of questions that uh, you're going to be asked would maybe be things uh, that you might not even think have to do with your issue. Um, however, again, uh, Chinese medicine is uh, holistic, so we need to know how all your systems are functioning together. 
you may need to answer questions like, um, how do you feel your body temperature is regulated? Do you run hot? Do you run cold? Do you notice a sensation of thirst? Are there certain flavors uh, that you enjoy more than others? There's always some of my favorite questions that a lot of people are shy about answering at first, but uh, are one of the best indicators of your health. And so um, we always talk about bowel movement. And uh -huh. so some people get a little squeamish about that, but it uh, is one of the easiest ways for me to tell um, how your digestive system and elimination system is functioning. And uh, I can share my experience that a lot of people have never really answered questions uh, about this before. So some people say, well, I don't know. And, uh, you know, so some of the questions that you have to answer might even help you to become more aware of how your body is functioning and perhaps where it might not be functioning as optimally um, as, as you feel. Uh, of course, for women concerns, uh, we definitely need to talk about uh, men menstrual health and things like that, uh, fertility. Um, it's, it's going to be... Um, as far as the form goes, it'll be the same for everyone, but then you might have some other questions to answer in person based on your gender, your age, and, and what your concerns are. So yeah. it's an interesting process, and I think it's actually part of the treatment because people have a lot of uh, realization when they start to examine their own lives and their health and what that looks like. Yeah. Um, for our nutrition stuff, we also have a question in there that asks, how is your bowel movements? What consistency are they? Frequency? Does it hurt? Is it easy? All those things because diet is a huge factor into our bowels, provided that that's the only thing that's uh, being affected right now, too. And so um, just get used to talking about poop, people. Like, <laughs> you're gonna have to talk about it. So I feel like once you've been a mom, it's not so bad. You get used to talking about poop all the time. But uh, guys, it's not anything to be embarrassed about. So just talk about it be open with it um so the other thing is body temperature for sure a lot of people don't even recognize what their body temperature is like if they're running hot if they're cold are their feet always cold fingertips whatever the case may be where in the body um and also time of day as well so when you if you're able to when you go through that does that kind of like check some boxes on like i need to look at these meridians versus well uh, absolutely, Lisa. That's exactly what it is. Um, it's our way of uh, diagnosing an issue or figuring out what um, meridian or channel might be blocked or not communicating properly. Um, each um, channel goes to a specific body area. Each channel regulates different emotions. Each channel um, uh, has its own idiosyncrasies. And the information that I'm asking for provides me information on those systems and lets me know exactly how to guide my treatment. So that's basically, there is a method to my madness and the, the questions have a purpose and it's basically uh, to allow me to diagnose your syndrome dif differentiation. That's what we call it in Chinese medicine. Western medical doctors would say diagnose your disease, yeah. um, but we don't treat or diagnose Western medical diseases in Chinese medicine. So it helps me to complete my syndrome differentiation for you so that we can um, move forward with your treatment protocol. Yeah, that's, and I love that. I love that a, you don't even put the word disease in there because it can't, it's not always a disease. And the moment, especially Western world, we hear that word and we think the worst thing possible versus it could be as simple as you're just not honing into your breathing very well. Absolutely. And uh, I don't want people to get me wrong. I want people to know that uh, I'm a huge fan of Western medicine. We're really, really blessed in this area. We have amazing doctors and practitioners here who are very open minded and are very caring of their patients. Mm -hmm. um, again, I don't uh, diagnose or treat Western medical diseases. Um, and uh, I advocate for the use of our medical system as we have it. It's a wonderful tool. And uh, a lot of my patients come to me and uh, the first thing they, they answer, I have a question about um, what medications are you taking? And a lot of them answer right away. They say, oh, but I don't want to be on that. And they look away from me. And uh, the first thing I tell them is, uh, you know, uh, actually 
a lot of these things are necessary for you and you don't have to look at it as a failure that you're taking them or that they're bad. They're simply a tool yep. and they're a delivery system uh, to help optimize your health. So, you know, our mindset can affect our healing and I want people to know how important it is that I feel like all health practitioners should be collaborating uh, with each other towards their uh, client or patient's health. And uh, I, I think it's great if we can all work together and recognize the strengths of our own modality and where other modalities might um, be more appropriate in different situations. So that's always a discussion I have with my patients because I'm an alternative uh, medicine practitioner. Uh, people think I may be biased. However, uh, I can appreciate um, the importance of everyone working together and how important other uh, practitioners are in someone's uh, health habits as well. Absolutely. So here, here to collaboration, you jumped ahead to my final question. So we're going to just do it right now. Um, right. When you, not my final question of what I gave you, this is a surprise question. <laughs> so right. moving forward, given the situation that we're in, we're in a place of evolution in essence, like truly we're watching human race evolve to one degree be it our daily practices, even our health, our, our bodies are having to find a way to fight off an entirely new virus within our world, where we're at. Um, but moving forward, and I'm kind of sensing that this was a hope already prior to this, um, where, where do you hope to see the health, fitness, and wellness industry? Where do you hope to watch it grow to or improve to be? Yeah, well, I certainly think um, that this is a catalyst for change, mm -hmm. and some of these changes are really positive. Um, one of the things I see is this opening up um, new worlds to new people and being able to reach beyond uh, the physical space and physical contact, mm -hmm. um, that we have so much more uh, to give as professionals, um, as educators and instigators. And I feel like um, this online world and online presence actually creates a, a need for more participation um, by the client and more of an understanding that actually they are healing themselves. Yes. And it's not the practitioner who's doing it to or for them, but it's a collaboration of all of us together. And I, I really hope that using this new platform that both practitioners uh, can let go of some of their ego uh, facing um, that on the outcome of their patients being their success or failure um, and and also that uh, patients uh, start to feel more responsibility and feel more empowered about their ability to participate in a situation and I see this as a, a really wonderful advancement so that um, uh, practitioners and patients or trainers and clients, whatever modality you're in, that we're on the same level in the same plane together. There isn't uh, someone higher and lower, um, you know, I think which is a perception that people get um, from in-person treatments or one-on-one -on -one sessions um, in the physical world. I, I really think this digital world is kind of opening up everything uh, for a new consciousness and I, uh, I love learning. For me, this is uh, a huge learning curve, and I think it's fantastic. And uh, I, I hope to see more collaboration. Um, and, and we can really do that across uh, cities, communities, continents now. And uh, I feel like we're, we're just going to learn um, how, how to even uh, get closer with this new online connection, even though we may be physically distant. Yeah. And then do you, do you agree that to be able to find a platform where our Western medicine doctors, our holistic practitioners, and even our trainers could all come together and basically look at me, the client's file, and say, okay, together, this is what we're going to work on, and these are our end goals for this person, together. <laughs> This is my hope uh, for the future. I think that uh, integrated system is beautiful. I actually had the opportunity to work in a university hospital in China, which has both Eastern and Western medicine um, working together. It was just amazing to be in the oncology ward to, to see people receiving their chemo or their surgeries, but then also uh, having the side effects of their Western treatments 
uh, taken care of and alleviated with acupuncture, herbs, um, even just um, with um, uh, interaction with uh, between the practitioner and the and the patient, and uh, seeing patients doing qigong and tai chi together, and seeing just um, you know just a beautiful marriage of the two, uh, what we call conventional and uh, traditional medicine, and just seeing better outcomes uh, for patients and patients feeling more nurtured yeah. and uh, safe and uh, cared for in addition to having uh, their treatments and uh, you know looking at that clinical side of things as well. Yeah. I think when you start showing that you have a team around you too, um, the hope is anyways that you have an internal belief that you you're supported in all angles and so no matter what the diagnosis might be or just the thing you're struggling with you're going to have a successful route and pathway cleared by this team for you to make sure that you make it and should you fall off one's going to catch you and put you back on because you are now not alone in the process you have a group of people who are sharing their knowledge and their understanding and being able to create the best laid plan rather than a personal individual plan because there's the barrier of well you're not in my world so why would i talk to you well we need to talk to each other about it especially when someone's health is involved Absolutely. And, and I actually think our uh, community is evolving a lot faster than people recognize. And I can just um, mention, you know, our maternity ward at the hospital oh, and yeah. lives in the low risk clinic. This is just a, an example of the amazing integration that happens in our community. Um, I can also mention, you know, the chiropractic clinic that uh, I happen to work at. It's, it's beautifully integrated and there's no uh, separation. Um, there's no kind of hierarchy of chiropractor, yeah. acupuncturist, massage therapist, Reiki practitioner. You know, we're all here together. And um, when our clients give us consent, we can look at each other's charts and discuss their cases. And it's amazing. Um, in China, it was hard to come back here because in China, I could ask for a lab report, um, oh. you know, and then read it. We're taught how to read them. But I could send someone for blood tests or, or x-rays or whatever here. Um, you know, that's in the scope of practice of an MD, not, not what I do. Um, you know, but at our chiropractic clinic, if I suspect someone has further needs, I can speak with one of my chiropractors. They can see the patient and then they can send for the x-rays. And with the patient's consent, I can read them. And yeah. just seeing that sort of process. Is, is, is an example of how, how beautiful it can be. And there are a, a few physicians here in High River who've been kind enough to um, work with uh, me with their patients mm -hmm. and have uh, a, shared some lab reports with me on, uh, on behalf of their patients or allowed their patients to take their lab reports and present them to me and uh, are willing to work through the whole process and, and create a discussion um, and uh, about the patient and not about themselves it's, that's it's really beautiful we're really that, lucky in this community that is so promising and then like I can take it one step further because I've done this with um, your chiropractic clinic and the physiotherapy and the other chiropractic clinics in town as well where with consent from our clients I get information from the clinics about the clients so as a trainer then I can take the recommendations from the doctors and then applied into their training programs as well and that makes my job easier because I'm not guessing and chances are it makes your job easier as well because you know that they're not going and doing something that you're not recommending them do because you have someone else on board helping you with that. Well absolutely and uh, you know I feel really blessed that I don't have that ego attachment. I, I can speak with other practitioners and listen to their treatment plan and then um, you know take into consideration and make sure that my treatment plan isn't including something that might override theirs yeah. so that we're working together and uh, I, I really invite any practitioners in this community who might be watching this if you have a patient that you share with me please reach out um, if you have your patient's consent or your client's consent uh, I'm more than happy to chat with you and and hear your ideas and, and share my own and uh, it's, it's 
just better for the people we're working for. Totally is. And I think that should become a universal thing across the board, no matter who you are, where you are. If you know that a client in whatever capacity is seeing someone else that it's still health, fitness, wellness related, reach out to that person, ask for permission to talk to that person in the other realm, chiro, massage, acupuncture, whatever it is, so that you can develop that relationship. It also helps in the sense that you start developing the cross referral because there becomes a mutual respect for each person as well because there's that extra effort put in to make that reach out, to make that contact, and showing that you actually have an invested care and concern about the individual in question as well. Absolutely, now speaking as a, a, a business person and not just a practitioner, I can say word of mouth and referrals has been an amazing way uh, that I've built my patient list and uh, you know, uh, just getting to know more about who's in your community and who else, uh, might benefit uh, your patients. It's just an amazing thing. And we should all be working together uh, to help each other out. And yeah, as a business person, it's just um, great. I try to reach out to other practitioners, um, even if uh, they don't necessarily share a patient with me, just to learn about what they do, because you know what, my modality doesn't have all the answers. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I just want to um, help the person achieve their goal. And uh, just because my way uh, didn't have it for them, I want to be a part on the pathway and, and help them find what will. Well, in your way might have, you might just need that one extra puzzle piece to finish it, right? So your methods might be working, but you need one more thing put in there and that's it. Um, and, and even so, Lisa, um, it can even be the same uh, type of practitioner that I am. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what? Someone might not hear a message from me. I could say the exact same thing to a person, but they not, might not interpret it the same way just because of the way I look or feel to them. Someone else might tell them the exact same thing, but they might receive it better. So, you know, again, kind of letting go of that ego and attaching importance to someone learning something from you. Um, you know, I just think it's great. Uh, every once in a while in our office, I'll, I'll share a patient with one of our massage therapists and and the massage therapist and I will be collaborating and, uh, you know, I'll have told a patient something 20 times, you know, but, but they heard it from the massage therapist. They got it from, from them. And I'm like, that's amazing. I'm so glad you were able to communicate that to them. Don't know what wording you chose. Maybe it was different. Maybe it wasn't, but they can, uh, people receive things from different people, different ways. And, uh, I, I think it's amazing. Um, when we can all just work together and uh, again detach from that ego. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I've had experiences where I've had three different coaches. One was my actual coach. He sees me every day. Two other coaches who just happen to be in the same space at the same time. They're all watching because what else are you going to do? And then the two other coaches come over and say, Have you considered this? And then it's like light bulb moment. And the, my coach would be like, I've been telling her that 10 times, we used one different word. And it's just finding that language or even the cue that will work and trigger for that person. And it's amazing what it can do. And it's the, they're all the same experience, the same knowledge, same everything, but different perspectives, different angles come in and can usually help immensely. Um, so I want to learn a little bit more about the flower. Where was it? Flower essence. I have never heard of this practice before. Um, you might actually have heard of this practice before, but you might have heard it called something different. Um, if you've ever um, seen at the health food store something called Bach Rescue Remedy. Nope. <laughs> um, lots of people have. I have lots of patients tell me, oh, you mean like Bach Re Rescue Remedy. Um, it's a, a certain type of medicine derived from flower petals, soaked in spring water. Um, I actually have a little vial of it here. Um, and uh, the patient just uh, takes a few drops under their tongue or adds a few drops into water. And um, it's, it's taken from flowers um, that are all, um, have different vibrational energies that treat different emotions. And we all know that our uh, emotional body um, our mental body, our spiritual body becomes our physical body. 
So even though it's geared to treat emotions, uh, sometimes it can treat uh, physical issues as well, especially when it's an issue that's uh, exacerbated or aggravated by stress okay. or by an emotional cause, uh, trauma. Um, it's a great treatment uh, for, for any of those things. Um, I took my training uh, in it years ago at Wild Road College. And I have actually um, wildcrafted um, 44 different flowers uh, that I can combine in different combinations uh, in order for you to uh, ingest and to achieve different uh, emotional uh, regulation goals. And cool. I love my flower essences. One of the reasons is there's almost no side effects. They're hypoallergenic. They're similar to a homeopathic in that there's very uh, little actual chemical um, in the formula. However, um, they're um, getting more and more studies done around them and people are seeing um, more and more clinical value for flower essences. You can give them to children, you can give them to people on medication. They're so easy to take uh, in an acute situation, a couple drops under the tongue, or as a preventative situation, a few drops uh, in, in a beverage consumed daily. And uh, it's been amazing the results uh, I've seen with people with just something so simple, mm -hmm. inexpensive, and uh, self-administered. So uh, I really enjoy my uh, flower essence practice. And it's just, um, I learn more and more uh, about it every day as it's becoming more prevalent. Uh, when I studied it, um, I, I didn't really know anyone else who was practicing it. But uh, now it's uh, becoming more and more popular, like I said. You know, someone could just go to Okotoks Natural Foods and buy Bach uh, Rescue Remedy. Um, but uh, the difference is, is it's a, a kind of a one-size-fits-all formula, um, whereas what I do is I look at the patient's goals, I give them their assessment, and then I actually pick the flowers specific to their concerns. Um, it's uh, tasteless, odorless. Um, and uh, again, it's a form of vibrational uh, medicine and similar to homeopathic, but there's very little chemistry in it. But uh, definitely a practice that I enjoy. Uh, some people might consider it a bit out there, but uh, to me that really doesn't matter when a patient sees results. Uh, I think that's what's the most important thing. If it works, it works, right? I mean, it's the same as um, going, it's like in terms of anxiety and stress, doing the Qigong, going for Tai Chi, learning how to chant in like a Buddhist style, those things, right? It's finding the thing that speaks to you and works for you. It's like, you know, we find that yoga practice that works for us individually, then by all means, keep doing it because that's your thing. And I don't think, I don't think we're allowed anymore to poo-poo anyone's perception on what is good for their own benefit unless it is like identifiably hurting them. Um, and, and I think one of the most powerful things uh, to me, because I'm a skeptic, um, I, I do combine some out there things in my practice uh, for patients' benefits. I, I do a lot of research and read clinical trials, but um, what's even more powerful uh, to me than just reading research is actually seeing benefits. Um, I've got uh, three people off methadone with flower essences, wow. and that's pretty hard to taper off. Um, I've helped people stop smoking with it. I've helped people who've been on crazy anti-anxiety medications for years um, and worked with their doctors. I don't make changes to meds. People make changes to meds with their doctors. Yeah. But just using flower essences, helping people... Um, move forward um, in some of those situations and it's it's really amazing when you uh, see somebody move out of the drop-in center that's amazing you know, that's, that's a result that's incredible and that probably is something that you hold really close to you as well as like not that you're proud of what you did but you're proud of what they were able to do with your assistance right and that's huge well, um, you know, um, I'm just the delivery system. I'm simply facilitating the process. It just gives me great joy to watch someone come from a situation that's causing them distress, uh, to see them grow and uh, be able to enjoy a quality of life. Yeah. That's the most amazing thing. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, I've never heard of that form of treatment, but it makes me think back to how, like, 
um, indigenous people treated with a lot of medicine using what was available to them, grasses, plants, roots, all of those things. And then even it, it instantly went to like the Swiss with um, Arnica. Not that it's applied the same way, but it's the flower and so on. <laughs> I, I actually uh, do have Arnica as one oh. of my flower essences. Uh, again, um, the chemistry in a flower essence is so tiny um, compared to like saying using Arnica topically as many um, athletes do to an injury or uh, taking um, Arnica caps. Yeah. Um, it's a it's, uh, lot smaller than that, but uh, yeah, I've, I've collected Arnica before and, and actually um, that is one of the flowers that I can put um, in a flower essence and it's, that one is amazing for trauma. Oh. I think we're all living in trauma right now. So yeah. a lot of my patients are getting Arnica. <laughs> Time to uh, stock up on the Arnica and right. uh, be ready. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, that's that's in, well. That makes sense though, because in essence, our topical application is to treat a trauma that's happened in the tissue. So that makes perfect sense. That's oh, really cool. Thank you so much. Um, so as a practitioner, you come across a brand new, young, excited, eager practitioner who's going through maybe their schooling or just finished. What are three pieces of advice that you would give them that you hope they hold on to and carry with them as they progress in this field? Wow. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I, I uh, think back to when I just graduated and uh, I wish um, present me could have told past me some things. Uh, I think something I've been talking about um, during our interview is letting go of the ego and attachment to outcomes. I think that's one of the things uh, a lot of people get really passionate about what they've just learned and uh, you know they feel like it's the only way people are going to get better. Um, I would say you know let go of that. Um, I would say look into other modalities, uh, get to know other practitioners in your area, find out what they do and uh, learn about their system so if your system isn't effective you can um, help your people find uh, the people who are going to help them um, and I think uh, you know it's okay to be where you're at uh, you don't have to know everything uh, you've got lots of time to learn um, in in the fields of health and wellness you know whether you're a personal trainer or whether you know, you're a massage therapist, Reiki practitioner, acupuncturist, whatever your shtick is, you have your entire life to learn it. Look at it as a, a passion and a purpose in life, and you'll never stop learning. And it's okay to be um, uh, new and to not know everything. Yeah. It's, it's okay. And I think, you know, that's where a lot of people uh, just starting out stumble. Um, they feel uh, less than maybe because they're newer or they feel like um, I need to know everything right now. And, and no, you've got time. It's okay. Let, let yourself be and be comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned before we started, um, you mentioned like neuroplasticity. Plast oh my gosh. It's usually easier to say <laughs> neuroplasticity and how like we're experiencing that right now in as, as practitioners how we've had to like instantly go from you know one-on-one -on -one touch time with clients to doing this through the screen over the phone I mean you read my tongue using the camera of my computer um, so I think that even goes further for the younger ones from listening to you that uh, yeah, your, your brain is going to be moldable and pliable and you're going to take on and learn new skills over time, provided that you keep being open to that happening. Absolutely. I, I think it's a beautiful process and not only just getting to learn that technology, um, you know, personally, um, being a very hands-on kind of caveman-y type person, <laughs> I kind of avoided the computer as much as possible. That's why I loved my profession. You know, I hand wrote all my uh, clinic notes and then everything else was hands on. Um, but now using uh, the computer, learning different programs, but then also learning different ways to get the information I need. And conducting assessments is really different um, in this online space 
um, making sure the patient can get enough natural light um, in, in the room they're using to use the technology so I can read their tongue properly. Um, if I need to do any physical assessment, like it's a pain concern or a musculoskeletal um, dysfunction, I have to be able to figure out how to get them to position their camera for me to tell them to do different activities so I can see it from the angles I need to, or um, how to set up their camera so I can see something in relation to them like a physical plumb line, you know, like get them to stand in front of their closet doors so there's a line so I can see, you know, if there's a raised shoulder or things like that. And in the, in the uh, clinic room, I just had things set up, right? But now it's like, okay, they might not have that in their home. What else do they have that we can use? You know, normally with um, uh, an acupuncture appointment, I'm very hands-on. There'd be a lot of uh, Twina or, or Chinese medicine massage mm -hmm. and uh, trying to describe to people how to be able to massage themselves um, with tools they have around their house um, has been interesting um, because, yes, administering the treatment, I'm just used to doing that. Um, but now I have to describe to the patient how to administer the treatment with the tools they have in their own home. And it's been an interesting experience, and uh, I've learned so much through it. Uh, I'm just uh, really enjoying it. And, yeah, it's those, uh, you know, uh, developments taking place uh, in our brains and those new neuron pathways starting to, to connect. Uh, it's, it's, it's just been really fun. Yeah, that's good. Isn't it funny how we've all become teachers all of a sudden? <laughs> yeah, instead of doers. Yeah. Uh, I'm really used to being a doer, right? Like it was easier just to, I'm going to put the needles exactly where, where they need to go, manipulate them just the right way, and we're going to assume that um, this was the magic pill, so to speak, yeah. and that um, I was doing all the treatment but now you know it's this realization that uh, you know the patient's body is healing themselves my needles uh, were just uh, the delivery system and uh, you know we can get the same results with the patient doing things for themselves empowering themselves uh, it's, it's pretty amazing it is isn't it okay so before we leave I want you to walk us through maybe just using the ear or uh, somewhere in the face if there is where we can help reduce stress or maybe flush out some trauma that's probably pent up somewhere awesome I have a couple of really quick easy suggestions that anyone could uh, use at home I'd love them to get some value out of our time together today um, I'm gonna show two really simple things one thing on the ear and one thing on the wrist. Um, both of these can be done by anyone. No one else is really gonna notice what you're doing. Uh, so this is a treatment you can give yourself and uh, just so simple. The first one I'm gonna show you, I actually have uh, what's called ear seeds in place right now. There's a little gold ball underneath a uh, crystal uh, sticker on my ear. And that's basically placed on an acupressure point uh, called Shen Men, and that's just uh, means calming the spirit. So if someone's having a, a panic attack, if someone can't fall asleep, um, we stimulate that point um, with the ear seed uh, to help them uh, be able to calm and relax. And they've done a lot of clinical trials um, and studies proving that stimulation of this area is, is going to communicate with the vagus nerve, going to communicate with our parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems uh, to create the changes that we need to calm down. Now, if you don't have an ear seed, that's okay. You can just squeeze this whole area with your finger and, and it won't be the optimal results, but it'll create some results and uh, help regulate that vagus nerve. So I'm just gonna take my thumb and put it on the triangular area in your ear. You can see where my ear seed is, so yeah. it makes it pretty obvious kind of at the top of the ear and you can just squeeze it for yourself and the way I like to do my acupressure is I have you press as you breathe in and then release as you exhale and then you can continue to do this for about a minute and then see how you're feeling at the end has your um, uh, anxiety level decreased if not just keep going. You'll, you'll find that um, 
this area is tender and um, you know it really starts to uh, distract you from whatever situation environment or emotion that was kind of running the show so that's a great one that anyone can use um, again I have ear seeds on they're a treatment that I can guide people to do and sell them the products they need to do that but they can certainly just squeeze their ear without it that'll be fine cool. and then for uh, people at home the other point I'd like to show uh, is uh, in Chinese medicine, we call it PC6. That just uh, tells us the meridian name and where on the meridian it is. Uh, the name of it in Chinese, uh, Neguan, means inner gate. Um, and that means um, regulating how we feel inside and how we see ourselves um, when it comes to the world. If someone's having anxiety, seasickness, especially the kind of anxiety that people start to feel their chest constrict because mm -hmm. this meridian, the pericardium meridian, uh, spreads on the chest. Like so, if you've got, <laughs> <laughs> so, so if you've got that chest tightness or that feeling like your stomach's lifting up into your chest, that really anxious panic attack feeling, uh, there's a point, it's on both your wrists, so you can stimulate both of them, but I mean, if you're taking care of yourself, you can only do one at a time. Mm -hmm. um, and to locate it really simply, it's going to be two thumb widths above the wrist crease in the center of the forearm on the hairless side of the forearm, so the palmar surface. And you can just place your thumb there and uh, do the same thing and squeeze. And normally I would be holding my arm like this when I'm doing it, but I'm just doing this so you can see where I'm doing it in the camera. And again, uh, just squeezing by uh, pressing uh, and then releasing and go with your own breath and just keep doing it until you feel that anxious uh, feeling going away. Um, I've often used this one as a really cool party trick. If someone's got the hiccups, it also resolves the hiccups. It's pretty neat. I used to have a patient whose diaphragm would be irritated from laying face down. She'd always get hiccups immediately. So we'd always just put the acupuncture point and as soon as she laid down and her hiccups would go away. So that's uh, a little fun fact for people. So uh, yeah. um, those are the two things uh, um, that can help people manage um, anxiety in this uh, stressful time. And I hope they find it useful. Do you have any questions about the two points we talked about, Lisa? Um, not entirely. I guess it's fine, like landmarking it, but I guess probably you have a little bit of, if you can see your veins, you have some vein patterning where you can landmark the position, correct? Um, there's actually, um, for people who are oh. really sinewy like me, yeah. you can actually see two tendons yeah. when you flex your wrist. Yeah. To be really accurate, like if you were using a needle, I would be needling in between those two tendons. But since you're using your thumb, that's like the size of a of a nickel, right? You've yeah. got a lot of leeway there. So yeah. with acupressure, that's the reason why it's great um, to give that to patients because they don't have to be as accurate as I have to be with a needle. Yeah. You know, your thumb's this big, so as long <laughs> as you're in the area, you're hitting it. You're, you're doing pretty good. Um, and it's pretty much, like I said, two thumb widths above the wrist crease, kind of in the middle. Mm -hmm. And and, and uh, it's going to be a little tender there. That's another uh, way you can tell you're in the right spot is most of these uh, spots will talk back to you a little bit. Okay, good to know. Thank you so much, Sarah. I really, really appreciate you um, opening up and talking about your practice and educating us a little bit further on what you do and how much you do. Um, you are a lifelong learner for sure. And I look forward to your Qigong teachings when you start doing that and, um, and seeing what you learn next and take on for yourself next into the future. This has been fabulous and I really, really think that the people around us in our community and many people outside of here too are going to take great value from this. So I appreciate your time and thank you so much. Awesome and thank you, uh, Lisa, for connecting all of us. Um, we really appreciate um, your commitment to this community and uh, helping us all uh, be together and, uh, and uh, I'm just so thankful uh, that you're here with us. Thank you. I appreciate that. And just doing what I can, right? And I thought in the end, that's all we're doing. So it's nice to see that we can work together as a group and hopefully build something truly amazing from this as time progresses as well. So I want to say thank you very much.
Awesome. Thank you.